Coach, go ahead and make an opening statement and we'll open up for questions. Congratulations to Wisconsin. Hard fought win. Made a lot of tough plays there at the end of the game to be able to come through. And that's what it was going to take in this one. A couple baskets here and there, a couple offensive rebounds. Um, you know, to be able to pull away. But they did a great job of being able to claw and hang. And then I thought that um, thought their front court really finished us off. You know, they got us on the offensive boards when we switched uh, in the clock situations to take away the three. And they were able to convert on a couple big, you know, jump hooks, two points, you know, in and around the basket and made some timely plays. But we played hard and competed, and uh, we were right there. We played well enough to win for most part defensively. But uh, offensively, just things around the basket were, you know, really hard for us. If you look at our two-point field goals in the game, you take away the, you know, 15, 16, 16, and we were 14 for, 42 from the floor, from two, is that right? 43. Yeah, 14 for 43 from two point range. That's not gonna get it done. And uh, you know, if you just look at our lines, you know, Thompson one for five, uh, Bronco for two, uh, Trace was two for eight, Dustin three for seven. So not a lot of those guys were taking a lot of threes. So things around the basket were made difficult by their size, their bigs dropping. You got to make some jump shots against them, which Devontae did early in the game. And then I think he tweaked an ankle or something because he, he definitely did not move the rest of the game the right, you know, it looked right. Uh, but we had our chances. Our race came in, gave us a great boost on the offensive glass. And, uh, you know, Rob had seven assists, zero turnovers. And I thought Al did a pretty good job. But this is a really hard fought game that's going to come down to a few plays you're going to look back on and wish you had it back. But in a game of inches, you got to make those winning ones, and Wisconsin did. Of course, the last seven, eight minutes, you just went uh, 12 shots in a row without scoring, but it's like seven of them were in the paint. Were you, were you getting shots that you wanted, or is it just uh, uh, just not, not, not happening? You know, without watching it, I can't say, but I think we got some good shots. We got some two-point baskets that uh, didn't go in. You know, whether it was jump hooks, drives, offensive rebounds, you name it. But they're big, man. They played two big guys a lot of the game. Size around the basket was, was a problem for us. I didn't think our guards got anything at the rim. It was very easy. Um, but, you know, we played with seven turnovers. Uh, the one thing that really, really stands out to me was with about eight minutes to go, maybe even ten, we almost had them doubled up on the glass. The rebounding was about 30-something to 20-something, and it finished 38 to 34. You know, to me, the rebounding really, really started to change with about eight minutes to go. Long rebounds, two or three of them led to five, six points. And then a couple back-breaking tap-ins in the last two minutes uh, when we switch to take away the pick and pop. Their big rolled us down, their other big came in. However, it, was, it worked when we rotated when the guard drives. Not being able to carve out and keep those guys off the glass was a big part of the, of the game. They were able to take advantage of that at the end. I was ask about the struggles inside. Is there a I mean, I don't know what you guys want me to tell you inside. There's no magic wand to score on 6'10 or 6'11. You got to score the ball a couple of times. I thought Ray Thompson in the second half played with unbelievable authority, and he got it in. Everything else for us was a little bit soft around the rim. I didn't think they, they played soft around the rim. I thought they were able to pound us and be able to take their dribbles when they didn't to shoot jump shots and go in. It wasn't as if everything was just a missed wide open layup. I mean, you're talking about that's the way Wisconsin's won eight in a row. They make threes, they got a difficult style to play against, and then defensively they keep their bigs back and they make things hard. You gotta shoot in between the big and the rim. And that's why for about 20 years, they've been pretty good. They got unbelievable size and skill. They play hard. Um, I can't say that our guys didn't play hard. I can't say that we didn't get some good looks. We just, at, the, at, the, at times that we needed to be able to convert, we didn't. Especially, I thought, last two minutes. Last two minutes when we actually got some stops, the ball was coming back down. We had some easy ones that didn't go in. Race tip dunk didn't go in. Devontae had a runner right in front of the rim didn't go in. We just we couldn't convert inside the paint. The percentage is what it is. We didn't finish. Looking at games in the second half where you guys have leads late, like Arkansas, Maryland, and again today, do you see any defining characteristics about why it kind of goes away late and you guys aren't able to run with the wins? Each game's different. Our team right now is a lot different than in those games. And in this game, I thought Wisconsin earned the win, did a good job, and be able to get some stops. We weren't able to convert. And uh, on the other end of the floor, we got stops and 
at the end of the day, they beat us to some loose balls and long rebounds. And then, um, you know, the last couple minutes, not being able to get the one-time rebound when we actually get a, you know, a stop. You know, when you switch ball screens with them at the end of the clock, you got to keep it in front. But when you don't, you got to find a way to keep them off the boards. But this game is irrelevant compared to any other game. This game was played by two teams at the end of the season that competed really hard. And, um, you know, like I said, Wisconsin made the plays they needed to do to win it. Great. Archie, so um, none of us know, like, the bubble, you know, what it looks like or who's going to get in. And, and you don't know either, but you sounded confident out there on the court. I and mean, there's no way to know what you You know, if you watch Sesame Street and you listen to all the characters on Sesame Street talk, and everyone gets all under, oh, it's like, well, if you watch Sesame Street, you listen to the guys on Sesame Street, it's a children's show. Every bracketology is a children's show. Bottom line with our resume is the strength of record, and that's undeniable. It's a top 25 strength of record. If you don't put in a top 25 strength of record team with the wins that we have, you know, somebody's going to have to answer some questions. You know, maybe they didn't win on the road. All right, there's about 15 teams that didn't do that. Well, maybe they didn't beat enough that, well, there's some teams that have maybe half of the amount of quad one in two games that we have. And when you look at our wins, I think we have three wins against the top 10 in the quad. I mean, like two seed Florida State, you know, you beat this team, but since December 3rd, we have not played one team that's not a high major team. No one's done. But when you start to go through the bracketology and you listen to the Sesame Street cartoon guys on TV and need people to click and do all this stuff, the bottom line is strength of record. Who'd you play? Who'd you beat? And if you look at our wins, there's very few teams in the country that can say that they've beaten the Florida States, the Michigan States, the Ohio States, the Iowa's, the Penn States, who clearly are in the field. So if you're beating six, seven teams in the field, you should be in the field. Now, everyone's going to say you don't have a 500 record in the league. They've already stated that the 500 record in the league doesn't matter. It's your body of work. Because there's certain teams that played the 330th non-conference strength of schedule, which we didn't do. So if you add it all up, you scheduled to make the tournament, you've got a lot of good wins, played in an unprecedented season in the Big Ten in terms of the depth. And when you have that many teams competing for the tournament, 12, most of the year, and you beat each other up, my hope is that they just don't take it for granted how hard it is to win the league. And um, I think today was our 24th and 25th straight Power 5 game. And who does that? You know, we did. You know, everyone wanted to bust their chops to start the season on a non-conference schedule. It worked out. Princeton's going to be in the Final Four of the Field Conference USA champion or at least has a chance as Louisiana Tech. South Dakota State won their league. End up playing UConn and Notre Dame, but some of those games are a crapshoot sometimes. Both teams have had pretty good years. I mean, beat them away from home. In league play, it just it is what it is. Who'd you play, who'd you beat? So when I look at the stuff that really matters, the net is considerably different than any other number that, that stacks us. And that's because the net now goes into margins. So they don't really care if you've been a great game on the road by one, or it's, or, or did you beat a really good team at home by four? Now, there's some efficiency and there's some things that go into the winning margin of a game and some efficiencies that go into the net that don't add up. But if you look at KPI, BPI, Sagarin, look at all of the metrics, Ken Palm in the top 35, strength of schedule is like 14 on all of them. It's like, who'd you play, who'd you beat? I think at the end of the day, our strength of record is like 26 coming into the game. If you have a strength record in the top 25, you know, you play a good schedule and you beat good teams, you should be in the tournament. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you. That I don't know if that answered. <laughs>